Skull Island Rise of Kong is an action platformer developed by Iguana Bee. It was published by Game Mail Entertainment for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and series consoles, and Nintendo Switch in 2023. Rise of Kong, huh? Like King Kong? That's the giant ape that fought Godzilla a few years back. Right. <laughs> they can create with CG nowadays. Uh, dude, computers. If you're unfamiliar with King Kong or his lineage, the creature is the brainchild of filmmaker Marion C. Cooper, who longed to tell the story of a great primate menacing the New York City skyline. So in 1933, Cooper produced and directed just that, a motion picture called King Kong. In it, a film production crew sets off to the exotic fictional location of Skull Island in an attempt to make an incredible movie not knowing what they'll find. Long story short, production crew finds a gigantic primate, King Kong. There's some snatching. And searching. And dinosaur fights. And bonding. Production crew captures the ape. They pluck him off Skull Island. And plop him in New York City. But he escapes. Kong goes up the Empire State Building. Kong goes down the Empire State Building. It's a classic! The original film became a box office success, an impressive feat considering it was released right in the middle of the Great Depression. It's meld of horror, action, drama, and, for its time, cutting edge effects, made it one of the most renowned and influential movies of, well, ever. Yep, notoriety bigger than the beast himself. Now, the Kongster may be infamously remembered for kicking the bucket in his big screen debut. The airplane's got him. Oh, no. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. But we don't need to tell you that this poor misunderstood giant lives on today. The already enormous King Kong property ballooned into a multimedia franchise that flung the Kong name everywhere. Plenty more movies, books, TV shows, comics, merchandise, a freaking Broadway musical. It can change you forever. Oh, and more than a few video games. And uh, by the way, Donkey Kong doesn't count. <laughs> But we only care about one of those many games today. Polish those fangs, practice your primal roar. It's time to fire up the Nintendo Switch and play Skull Island Rise of Kong. Ah, okay, ho hold it, stop. Whoa, 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 we're just getting started. What's up? You're seeing this, right? The start screen for the freaking game? Look at it. Is that, it, is it like, Popping? Honestly, I don't know what you call this, but looking closely at the foliage and background assets, there is definitely a problem here. Things are flaring and resetting every few seconds. Heck, even when you press A to play, we're hit with other asset problems. Watch the yellow highlight as I bounce between menu options here. Kinda of funky to the eye, right? Slow it down a little bit and you clearly see frames of this animation are incorrectly placed. Ouch. Lack of attention to detail, this glaring, and we haven't even started level one. Well, no backing down. We got a job to do. We're going in. We start a new game and get a healthy chunk of Kong lore. There are stories of gods told by fanatics. Stories of kings told by the oppressed. The narration and cave drawings do a cheap but commendable job telling us about the colossal ape species that happens to live on Skull Island. Seems they fought for generations to survive amongst the land's other inhospitable beasts. Thinned out and nearing annihilation, eventually only one Kong family remains on Skull Island. The game loads up and we're ready to... Oh, wait. Okay, the game loads up and we're ready to king our best Kong. And apparently our best Kong is a character and world cobbled together with real muddy visuals. These textures, even by Switch standards, ain't good. Kong is less covered in gorilla fur and more wrapped in veiny carved flesh. Gross! We start dabbling with the camera controls and, whoa, anyone else feel that earthquake? The camera in this game doesn't really play nice with in-world objects. You don't have to explore much to see it happen. When it collides with anything in this this cave, we get serious judder. Well then, I say we ditch the cave and head on out. Whoa, you kidding me? 
We got levitation over here. Three steps in and we're witnessing a miracle, people. We've got to take this Kong out for a spin. How's everything controlling so far? Um, hmm. We got a standard run that feels oddly slower than the animation implies, but no worries, Kong can sprint around too. But check this out. If you really, really want to dial down the speed, this is what happens when you barely nudge the stick. We're speedless. And speechless. Oh, look at that. We got a little head bob going on too. Let's see what else this game's got up its sleeve here. We got your garden variety basic attacks. Oh, but check this special move out. We can scoop up chunks of earth and hurl them around. Neato. Nice. Then there's this mean looking powered up backhand swipe, an attack animation that's capped with the Kongster. The tossing a handful of invisible trail mix in his mouth? Not really sure what's going on here. We can also perform Kong's iconic shout chest thump thingy. Cool. Seems to fill up this Kong head meter in the corner. Not sure what that's all about yet, but I bet we'll find out later. Let's hunt down some chump enemies to thrash. We head out, looking for foes to work over with our Kongly fists. And we're hit with a cutscene. Night storms are a bad omen in times of crisis. And the Kongs knew it well. Night storms. Night storms. Don't get us started on night storms. They're the worst. So ominous and bright and rainless. Really nice looking outside. It's kind of just a regular yeah, yeah, day, isn't, is, it? isn't it? It's yeah. just kind of a regular day. The father and the son had yet to return from hunting. Oh, oh we're, we're playing, playing as Mama, Mama Kong. She seems nice. Suddenly after a text box pops up to further enhance our gameplay, our first enemies emerge. The deadly Hoposaurus. They bite, sure, but they're pretty cute. Uh, this Hoposaurus is a Staposaurus. I'll just get a little closer and see if we could it looks like we can lock on enemies for combat, but it's not necessary. You can just spam the attack button until these critters stop moving and pop right out of existence. We then get to this weird wall that sports a glowing red shimmer. This can't be taken out with any kind of regular attack. Mama Kong's got to use her head, literally. Not a whole lot going on in the beginning of the game in terms of fun or excitement. A lot of open spaces funnel you through poorly rendered mountains. Every now and then, waves of easily smackable foes pop up. Near death, some of them glow red. This means you can hit a button and activate a killer finishing move. Cool. Sometimes. Really, the most interesting thing about this place so far is the bizarre design choices and real glaring issues. Like this mystical aquatic glitch discoloration thing that only seems to pop up when Mama Kong enters water. So distracting. What's even happening here? Speaking of H2 woes, it doesn't take long for us to find a waterfall nearby that doesn't seem to make water <laughs> fall. Sure, you got your water splash part down here. Remo splashing. But they're missing the whole water tumble down part. That's an important part. Oh, this underwaterfall. Waterfall up underwater. Up. Stupid human. Thanks, Kong. Clearly we're not accustomed to the wonders of Skull Island. How about we head over this way? Oh, look, a vine-covered rock formation. I wonder what that could mean. To climb, you should only approach climbable branches. Well, if there's one thing we know the Kong family is good at, it's climbing stuff. Not staying on the stuff after they climbed it, but they can climb really well. Wait, what? That's not right. Yeah, let's try that again. Wait, no, no, that's not how climbing works. We tried this more than a couple of times and I'd be lying if I didn't say we kind of got a kick out of it. No Continuing the tutorial, we stop mid-jog to learn about our special bar. That's the red bar in the top left of the screen. 
that apparently allows us to use cool skills in battle and can be filled up again by landing regular attacks. A tool to help us vary up offensive tactics. Got it. What we don't grasp? Why this info is accompanied by a stretched postage stamp of video that has about as many frames as Skull Island has Kongs. Hey, uh, folks, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but a lot of things in this game seem to be very buggy. Eventually, we come to a clearing. A clearing with clearing invisible walls. Come on, it's basically wide open here. Let us through! Enemies in this area seem less interested in attacking and more interested in playing a few rounds of peekaboo. Kong, turn away. Kong, turn back. No see dinos. Hey there, Mac. Gorilla, say bye. Turn around. Hi! We also notice something else here, thanks to the gaping invisible wall section acting as a kind of window to the valley below. It seems every time we make Kong shout, these white squiggly fireworks blast off in the distance. Cool! What the heck are those things supposed to represent? No idea. Game didn't say. They're a bit too prominent to write off as some kind of visual mistake, though, right? They've got to be used for something. Maybe they're not working as intended? Oh, things not working as they're supposed to be working in Skull Island Rise of Kong? Sir, staggering accusations. Kong go left. Dinos do too. Kong go right. So does my crew. Back over here. Dinos appear. The game tells us about another ability called Primal Rage. This drains the Kong head meter in the corner and allows your attacks to hit harder for a short period of time. Oh look, another shiny red wall. Mama Kong's got to use her head to break through, right? Right, I mean, you can if you want. Or you can take this detour over here, hop on this little hill nearby and leisurely stroll past the gate completely. Wow. That's an oversight. Just about everywhere you look in this game, you'll notice a glaring lack of polish. We don't really need to go out of our way to do some pretty bizarre things. Next, we come to a red shimmering floor similar to that wall gating we just easily walked around. The game wants us to bash through the ground this time. Sure, why not? This brings us to a space where we learn yet another cool Kong move. Gee whiz, we can almost make out what's happening in the Tiny Smear slideshow this time. Turns out Kong can leap greater distances with a couple button presses. It works kind of like how we're used to throwing grenades in some action games. The game displays an arc of travel that you can manipulate. Release buttons, Kong leaps. Feels a bit complicated for what is essentially a slightly farther jump, but at least it works. And hold on to that feeling. Cherish the times things actually work in Skull Island, because if you apply even a little pressure to the tissue paper holding this experience together, you get something like this. Mama Kong, hard locked in a wall of vines. Great! No matter what we press, no matter how we contort the controller's joysticks, the character model is unresponsive. We're sat, stupefied, camera trapped inside Mama Kong. Nice teeth. Ugh, right. Guess we need to reload. When we get back into the game, it isn't long before we climb and stumble our way to another cutscene. Um, hold on. Let's see that again. Yeah, stop right there. Let's just play with the image a little bit. Cool. Look at the foot on the left. Are you kidding me? It's floating? Guess they position this beast to look bigger for the shot or menacing? Menacing? Dumb is more like it. Well, looks like Papa and Baby Kong are in a pickle. Mama Kong watches helplessly as the beast and ape exchange blows very, very slowly. Papa Kong down, Baby Kong inconsolable. I mean, look at that little face. We all grieve differently. Why the grieving? His dad's dead. What? Nah, well I'll watch that hit again. See, Papa Kong, eyes wide open, roaring just before he hits the ground. And look. No blood, no visible damage to the body. Oh dang, maybe Papa Kong isn't dead. Could be taking a breather. Think Mama Kong knows this? The only thing Mama Kong's thinking about is tearing that lizard apart. Unfortunately for Mama Kong, we're in control now. Our first instinct? Run away. Maybe we can safely figure out the patterns of Gaw, this deadly dino boss monster. Whoop, look, it's headed this way. It's, it's... Frozen? 
behind a tree. Well, th this is awkward. You suppose we should uh, do something? I mean, yeah, probably, right? So we lob rocks at it. We've been hurling Earth for nearly two minutes. It's taking forever. But at least Mama Kong will live to see another. What? How did that happen? We were safe. Unstoppable. Dealing curve folders like Mama Kong was scouted for the bigs. Oh, so stupid. I think I know what happened. What? Let's check out a replay. Okay, here. Look at Gauze Life Bar. When its health reaches exactly the halfway mark. <sighs> a cutscene plays out in which you're supposed to lose. Look, if that's a story beat you want to hit, sure, go for it. Just don't give us control over a character that can easily win the battle. And then make it seem like our character was overwhelmed by the enemy. Ga was overwhelmed by the shrubbery. Any player can easily have this exact experience. Totally pulls you out of the game. With Mama Kong glaringly chomped to death and Papa Kong after catching some Z's, Baby Kong runs for it, no doubt leaving his tuckered pops to be eaten alive by Gaw. That's the spirit. The last survivors of the Kongs had perished against the fury of Gaw, except for a small infant. Poor Baby Kong is inconsolable, and we don't blame him. I'd be inconsolable if I was trapped in this game as well. He reflects on how his parents did everything they could to keep him safe. Hmm, interesting you bring up reflecting. I think we're supposed to see some kind of mirrored image in this puddle of water. It lingers pretty long before Baby Kong splashes at it. Kong yearns for vengeance. Baby Kong's all on his own now, trying his best to hunt down prey. Poor little guy, he's gotta bide his time until he becomes a bigger, stronger Kong. Oh, oh, the name of the game, Rise of Kong. I get it now. We're gonna play as a developing Kong, an adventure following an orphaned little ape maturing into the dominant force on Skull Island. We see Gaw's roar shake through the forest, awakening a much bigger, much stronger looking Kong. What? Did, did we just skip through the freaking Rise part of the game titled Skull Island Rise of Kong? Maybe. Or maybe this is the important part when he actually gets to test his merit and avenge his family? No, that's a ripoff. Going from a baby to an adult in an instant means we missed out on a ton of Kong fundamentals. How we learn to survive. How we learn to fight. All of it. Avoided. We were robbed of a stealth action baby Kong fruit picking game. I won't hear otherwise. Sorry, but this is the Kong we get. We're finally gonna play as the big guy, this guy, the gorilla we all came here to enjoy. No, no offense, offense, Mama Kong. Kong. Time to see Kong rise from the ashes of tragedy like a glorious primate phoenix. Oh, gross. How do our surroundings look worse than in the tutorial? Look at this place. Kind of get why the wildlife is so angry on Skull Island. Imagine having to spend every waking moment here. Maybe we should get moving. At least now we're actually playing as the title character. Let's see how Kong proper plays. So, uh... How is it? He controls like his mom. There's no difference. Funny. You think he'd be a different kind of Kong after growing up alone in the wilds of Skull Island. But hey, what do I know? Gotta say, as we're experiencing this new space, one thing is really sticking out to me. Look at this. The scale. It's way off. Yeah, I see what you mean. Look at Kong in the 1933 film. Look at him in 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong. 
look at him in the game's own freaking cover art. He's always huge. He towers over greenery, makes waterfalls look like sink streams. Even a large dino we fought in-game multiple times seems like a helpless puppy in his hand. Back in-game, it's this. We have a Kong at home, Kong. Look at him, a little over half the height of a palm tree. Sure, he's bigger than a regular gorilla, but not the towering figure I expected him to be. Well, love it or loathe it, slightly big Kong is who we've got to roam around with. Oh, speaking of roaming, I know we're on Skull Island, but where exactly on Skull Island are we? We got a map? Any kind of indication as to where we should be headed? Right, let's have a look-see. <clears throat> okay, looks like we're in a zone called the Waterfalls Valley. Sounds pleasant. Uh, what exactly are we looking at here, buddy? There, well, clearly the area labeled main entrance is where the level loaded. And then, hmm, where are we? The Waterfalls Valley? No, on the map. It says right there at the bottom, check your current position on Skull Island. What is our actual position? I am not seeing an icon for Kong anywhere. How are we supposed to check our position if we don't have a vague idea of where we are? Guess we'll just have to use our surroundings. Our surroundings? Don't get me wrong. There are locations we can pinpoint because the terrain shape or water placement are vaguely synced with the map, but most of the world is unreadable. A mishmash of samey textures that don't distinguish one area from the next. Well, who needs a map anyway? Us! Uh, no, 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 hear me out. Let's just go, man. H have faith in our instincts. Embrace our natural sense of direction. Maybe we'll stumble on the hidden beauty blossoming in Skull Island's natural habitat. You know, maybe you're onto something. Oh, look at this wispy glow off the beaten path. What do you suppose it could be? Some kind of marvelous secret? Well, don't just stand there. Grab it! Baby, Baby skull. skull. What? <laughs> Why? Looks like we found a collectible. Upon inspection in the menu, it gives us some history on Skull Island's inhabitants. Apparently, babies died here. That's what we learned. Dead babies. Skulls on Skull Island? Sure, yeah, that's one thing. It's in the name. We get it. But specifically, baby skulls? Calling it Baby Skull Island would probably harm the burgeoning tourism industry. Back into one of the more open spaces, we finally get a tutorial prompt about those strange white aerial fireworks we saw when we played as Mama Kong earlier. Says that those things are supposed to identify places of interest. Really? Janky sky streaks are supposed to be guiding us through the world? It looks like they're barely working half the time. Hey, seems like we're pretty close to a place of interest right now. We mosey over and trigger this. A kind of challenge mission the game calls an ascension event. We need to fight and clear the zone. We're locked into this location by a red barrier. We cannot leave until we accomplish a task. Our mission, take out a bunch of angry crabs. Not too hard to deal with these critters. Lay on the attack button while avoiding swipes from the bigger crabling. Straightforward, though got to admit, it ended a little surprisingly. Right. Anyway, looks like we got a skill point. Let's head into our skill tree and make use of that puppy. Oh, we got multiple ability branches here in the skills section of the menu, but it looks like we don't have enough skill points to make use of anything yet. In fact, it looks like we're very far away from earning enough points to buy anything. The meager points we've earned from this Ascension event are anything to go by. Great. There are a few wild crabs around here, but uh, defeating enemies that are not part of an Ascension event does not appear to give us any extra skill points. Yeah, sorry, this may seem like a small annoyance, but this is actually a big no-no. Games should give you enough skill points to at least do something the very first time they're acquired. It's how you teach players to use your dang skill tree. Don't introduce a currency we can't instantly learn how to use. Maybe we can find more challenge missions and remember to beef up our abilities later. We push forward. We climb up and around the crabby battle arena until we find another one of those shimmering walls the tutorial taught us to head bash. You, you need, need to learn, learn the hold heavy attack to destroy this debris. debris. Silly game. We know. You taught us with the multiple examples in the Mama Kong tutorial, remember? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and... Uh... Um, doesn't seem to be working. What do you mean? I can't do the heavy attack they taught us in the last level. What? No, that can't be right. Why would they do that? Why would they show you moves in the game's tutorial if you weren't supposed to make use of those moves immediately? No idea, but yeah, it looks like we can't do many of the things we learned. The giant arcing leap, the ground slam, 
the head bash. They're all stripped away. Wait, let's bring up the skill tree we were looking at before. Oh, there. See this? The leap, the ground bash, the freaking headbutt. All locked away and unusable? Ugh. You need to unlock specific abilities later in the game to properly explore every part of these levels. Why is this an issue? Look, the concept alone isn't a problem. Other titles have been doing this for years. Popular games like Metroid, Dead Cells, Hollow Knight, and some Castlevanias gate exploration with acquired abilities. But in those games, especially in modern releases, you get a drip feed of new moves over the course of a campaign. The player gets to comfortably build, understand, and utilize new movesets slowly over time time. It adds a satisfying feeling of progression. Not in Skull Island. Here, you are handed an information bomb of abilities with Mama Kong, only to have those skills locked away without notice. It's incredibly jarring to the player. Well, great. So this shimmering wall's basically a dead end. Let's get out of here. Hold up. Is that another collectible off in the distance there? Yeah, I, I think you're right. We should head over and snag it. Maybe this time it'll be a toddler ribcage. A bowl of food. Let's check it out in the collectibles menu. <clears throat> it's a plate. With nothing on it? Game? Why did we think they could figure out tableware when they can't even figure out a map location indicator? Where do we go next? We're having serious troubles figuring that out. Because a map without identifiable player or objective icons is pretty useless. And a sky-based place of interest system in a world with mountains that block said system from your line of sight? Pretty dumb. We keep marching in circles doing our best to read the land. We desperately run to all logical locations, climbing around, searching everywhere, till the game decides it doesn't like us anymore. Kong locks up. Sort of. We can jump, we can punch, we can evade, but Kong won't naturally move forward. Sure, his regular walking animation plays, but look! This gorilla's glued to an invisible treadmill. We eventually realize we can use our evasive role to kind of get around and, well. Yes, this gong life now. Fortunately, after several minutes, a quick random snap on some vines, and mysteriously, we regain control of Kong. Yay, we, we can, can keep, keep playing, playing Skull Island Rise of Kong. After recombing the entire zone, we finally do some finicky platforming and make our way to an area we've never seen. Hooray! Hey, this game has pickable objects, like dead logs and stalagmites. Guess I did that wrong. Cool. What else do we get to experience in this new area? Let's see. Uh, we got reanimated levitating crustaceans. Texture stretched to oblivion. A place where you can change day to night, back and forth, with a couple footsteps. An ascension event where enemies spawn out of dead enemies over and over again. and some of the worst pop-in we've ever seen in a video game ever. And if all that wasn't enough to monstrously test our patience, we come to this, a shimmering floor. You remember these, right? Of course. These are the ground sections the game taught us to break with a special move, a move we learned in Mama Kong's tutorial. A move that was locked away from us when we started playing as Kong. Guess we'll need to come back when we have enough skill points to unlock that ability and... Oh, what? We can, we can clip through the floor? <sighs> Whoa, ghost floor! Yeah, yes we can clip through. This looks very not good. Clearly we're not supposed to be here. Leave the anomaly behind and decide to find adventure elsewhere. We press on, deal with more ascension events, and finally collect enough skill points to make use of Kong's skill tree. Quick, buy that wall break ability they took away from us. Yeah, I would, but uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're only able to make minor adjustments to Kong's basic moveset right now. We still don't have access to the stuff we want or need. Floor smash, wall break, still locked away. Come on, these would be real helpful right now. Look, we keep finding red shimmering places that require Kong smashes. Normal flax just won't do. Wouldn't be so bad if we could see our character on the map and drop pins for backtracking, but no, we don't get those things. 
<clears throat> How about we just move on to the game's first boss? Earth Gija, a giant worm that tunnels through a sandy bowl-shaped arena. It's a plate. We quickly identify that this noodly fellow is good at swinging his head around like a wrecking ball. We probably need to get some distance. No problem. Kong has his ultra-handy Earthling projectile attack. We lock onto Mr. Worm, get ready to fling, and immediately notice something incredibly stupid. Kong's projectile attack doesn't hit things he's locked onto. The mounds of dirt he lobs shoot off to the right of the thing you actually want to connect with. Logical. So nix that plan, little trial and error, and we figure out that our burrowing foe creates giant boulders as he pops out of the ground. Boulders that he can accidentally bonk his own head into. It doesn't take long for us to take advantage of the worm fellow's self-inflicted catnaps, and before long, he is one limp noodle. First boss down. But no time to celebrate. Daw screams up place of interest confetti somewhere nearby. Gong needs to hunt down that killer dino. Oh, we got a whole four skill points. Nice. And looks like we unlocked the primal rage skill as well. Hmm, guess we get Mama Kong's old moves back by defeating bosses. Good to know, but we still don't have those smashy moves we need to bash through those impassable walls. Sometimes impassable walls. All right. Sometimes. You know, wrapping this first chunk of Skull Island, I feel dumbstruck by this experience. I mean, the things we're seeing here, man. Yeah, real sloppy. It feels like a game patchworked together with incomplete parts. The broken mechanics and blemishes we've been exposed to are beyond what we normally see on this show. How did this come to be? Right, well, looking into Iguana Bee and Skull Island Rise of Kong's creation, a pre-release interview with Gaming Bolt explains that the developer approached the game with the intention of sticking to the source materials. Not only Marion C. Cooper's original vision for King Kong, but also newer Kong adaptations. Iguana Bee teamed up with King Kong of Skull Island author and creative Joe DeVito to make that happen. Through sketches and documents available on the Skull Island Rise of Kong website, we can see that this collaboration wasn't taken lightly. They really want to make this a high-end Kongli experience. So, again, what happened? There isn't a lot of post-release information about this game's creation. A tech website, The Verge, did post an article that kind of points to answers. According to The Verge's anonymous Iguanabi sources, an outside entity could be responsible for what we're playing. That entity? The publisher. Game Mill Entertainment. Apparently, Iguana Bee was contracted by Game Mill to produce Skull Island Rise of Kong in about a year. That's a tight schedule. Adding to that, The Verge's sources explain that the group working on Skull Island could have been between 2 and 20 people at any time. For a game like this, an action platformer with huge levels revolving around a famous property? That is a very, very small team. Tight schedule? Small group of creatives? Those constraints alone are fair explanations for the game's poor quality. And according to that same article, Game Mill has a history of publishing titles with other developers in the exact same way. So, we figured we'd have a look at some. While Game Mill has helped launch many titles, some of their better known or higher quality releases seem to be games that were ported over from arcades. Big Buck Hunter, Cruise and Blast, games that likely required less tooling to port to other platforms. Heck, we played a bit of Cruise and Blast on Switch. It's not bad. But when you get to games based on famous properties built fresh from the ground up, titles like this one we're playing, that's where the quality of Game Mill's releases seem to dip. They published Nerf Legends, a first-person shooter leveraging the popular toy brand. Now, we've played bad-feeling shooters before, so trust us when we say this isn't just a bad-feeling shooter. This is the only first-person shooter we've played that makes your aim jarringly snap to the ground when you reload. Look, pretty disorienting really throws you off when you want to get back into the action. Game Mill also published the Nickelodeon Kart Racer series. Here's the second entry on PC. And this PC game has no video settings, no way to modify the resolution or visuals. The driving feels slow, the vehicles move rigidly, and the AI players are more nuisance than challenge. Worst of all, every character is silent.
a Mario Kart ripoff with classic Nick characters quietly puttering around poor tracks. They even published Goosebumps the Game, a point-and-click adventure title based on the 2015 Goosebumps film. We grew up reading the books, and this does not capture the feel of that spooky kid series. It features plenty of obtuse puzzles and punishes the player for exploration. The story asks you to accept bizarre leaps in logic. At the end of the day, it's just not fun to play. And then there's the game mill published Street Outlaws series. We played the second entry, Winner Takes All. We could review this game, but I think we could save time simply by revealing the name of the developer. What? Really? Who's behind the Street Outlaws games? Team Six Game Studios. Team Six Game Studios? The, the developers of Flat Out 3 Chaos and Destruction? The title we dubbed the worst racing game on Steam? Yes, sir. Game Mill Entertainment must have enjoyed Team Six's work on that gem. Oh, and since we're still on the topic of racing games, did you know Game Mill Entertainment previously went by the name Game Mill Publishing? No, I didn't. What? What does that have to do with racing games? Well, Game Mill Publishing's logo appears on another infamous racing title we're both very, very familiar with. Big no rigs no over the road racing no! and its sequel. No! Yeah, I think it's safe to conclude that Game Mill Entertainment cares more about the quantity of games it's releasing and less about the quality. No joke. And if we really want to drive home how a quantity over quality publisher like Game Mill Entertainment can affect the output of smaller teams like Iguanabee here, we can look at two more Iguanabee projects. This is What Lies in the Multiverse, a puzzle platformer with charm. It has awesome sprite art, witty dialogue, and intriguing characters that keep the player engaged in the game's reality-hopping narrative. It features well-constructed levels that make use of the game's cool universe traversal mechanics. It puts a twist on traditional 2D platforming with puzzle spaces that are a joy to solve. And this is G.I. Joe Operation Blackout, a third-person shooter with run-and-gun combat that lacks impact. The levels are bland. It has virtually no modern shooter flair like wall hugging and cover fire. It features vehicle segments without interesting set pieces and little in the way of driving freedom. The most appealing elements are the character designs and branding, which could spur spontaneous sales from fans of the series. Now, which of these titles do you think is published by Game Mill Entertainment? <clears throat> Is it G.I. Joe? Of course it's G.I. Joe! Look, here's what we're trying to get at. There are plenty of talented developers making all kinds of games. These creatives don't always have a say in what gets made, how it gets made, or how long they get to work on what they're making. Right. Create a cocktail of a capable team, toss in some extreme constraints like time and money, mix that sucker up, and you end up with something like, say, I don't know, Skull Island Rise of Kong. Which we really should be getting back into because we're heading into the game's second zone. Welcome to Jungle Wetland. Kong out. Wait, oh, hey, hey, hey you wait, don't. Kong, no, 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 there's no getting there. out of this. I don't blame them. This place is depressing. They stripped away the sun, muted all the color, and added spooky fog in the background. Um, I think you're seeing the game's awful draw distance. Oh, yeah. Huh. The map in Jungle Wetland is still not displaying where we are with any kind of positional indicator. We can assume we're here right now, the main entrance. Exploring Jungle Wetland, we get a pretty familiar experience. We fight enemies. Stumble into wispy golden collectibles, and we trigger more ascension events. Here, we're supposed to take out all enemy nests in the area. Not too tough. Despite the lack of challenge, this ascension event did teach us a couple things. For example, enemies don't attack Kong while he hangs on vines. Other neat thing we learned? Some critter attacks have the ability to fling a multi-ton primate across long distances in an instant. Despite these findings, there aren't a lot of meaningful changes in jungle wetland that affect gameplay. Pretty disappointing. There are purpley pools of bubbly goo that we've never seen before. We figured these were some kind of hazard. Nope, they're in no way detrimental to our character. Really, most of what jungle wetland switches up boils down to its gloomy visual overhaul. Here, we take out an enemy crab that somehow continues to pursue Kong. I mean, that's new. 
Persistent little guy. Up, oh, he's gone. Over here, it looks like the swamp is home to magically stretching textures as well. But do the game a favor, don't look around too much. You might notice things like this, a swamp tree asset that appears to be improperly placed. Without too much hassle, we were able to march through most of the place and head right into the game's second boss encounter. This crappy fellow is King Dengiz. He wastes no time picking up chunks of earth and hucking them at us. Hey, that's our move! Carefully working our way forward, we try to get in nice and close to see if we can crack this fella's shell. No good. We end up dodging his boulder chucks until he gets bored and leaves himself wide open, at which point we lob our own projectiles at his face. It's a slow fight. It ends up feeling less like an epic battle between two enraged monsters and more like kids half-heartedly exchanging snowballs at recess. After a while, we bash away the last bits of Dangus's health. He's done for. Kong springs into action. <laughs> King Dangus is no more. Kong caresses a crabby mandible, which I guess reminds him of his parents or something, because he immediately takes a nap and dreams of family. It's a quick cutscene depicting Kong's father saving the family from a dinosaur attack. Kong remembers it like it was yesterday. Papa Kong's bravery, Mama Kong's warm embrace, the textures hesitating to load. Kong awakens. With King Dingus mashed, Kong gets another handful of skill points and unlocks another of the special abilities we learned as Mama Kong. The Head Bash. Finally! Finally! Yeah, at last we can get through the shimmering red walls that barred us from experiencing previous areas in the game. Right, let's open up the map and work our way back to the other map and... Hey, hey. Any idea where we are? No. Any, any clue where those walls were from before? No. We, we head, head to, to the, the next zone. zone. Kong enters a lush new jungle area without moving his legs. Pretty impressive. What's that he sees from the corner of his eye? A dino butt. <laughs> we're on Gauze Trail. And we've entered the dark jungle. A place pleasantly brighter than the last area. All right, Skull Island. What have you got for us this time? Well, let's just go ahead and get a lay of the land. A picture of cooked linguine would be more helpful. Dozens of pretty trails to take in here. Lots of cool rock formations, healthy plant life, and great mountains to visit frequently. There's space to explore and explore and explore and explore and explore as long as you'd like and explore. The Dark Jungle features more ascension events. The deadly challenge is meant to push Kong's battle prowess to the limit. I beat this one by tapping a single button uh, in about nine seconds. To the limit! The dark jungle introduces some new enemies, like this big dinosaur fella here. We've also got the smaller velociraptor types that attack with a barrage of claw swipes. That is, when they feel like moving. We found these two locked up doing absolutely nothing. What's going on here? Stage fright? Oh, hey, hey. It's okay, little guy. Listen, Kong here for you. Kong get anxiety too. Deeper into the zone, we find a collectible. And what's that over there? That barely noticeable green glow. What? Why is the game loading? What the heck is happening? We're... We're back in the first section of the game! What? The game randomly teleports you to other parts of the world? Map, now! Oh, great. Right, we don't even know where we are in the first section of the game because the map doesn't show us. Who thought any of this was a good idea? So the choices are keep moving forward here, risk getting lost and having to rework our way through hours of game, or we try turning back to the dark jungle right now? It's not even a choice. In this game, there is no way we're trekking through every area again. Not when we're essentially finding our way through the world blind. Back in the dark jungle, we keep searching for areas we haven't visited, praying that we'll stumble into the boss fight. We don't find the boss, but boy, do we stumble. Oh God, no! <laughs> uh, Kong? Uh. <laughs> there he is. Climb back into the game? Oh, oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> that's not good. On the bright side, we've got a killer view of the game's skybox. Huh? He's in eternal glitch limbo. I guess we'll have to reload. It isn't long before we feel like we're making headway towards the dark jungle's exit. Look, one of those shimmering walls. Oh, we can finally do the headbutt smash move we've been complaining about forever. Words can't properly describe how much I want this to end. We hightail it, hauling past groups of enemies. The game's frame rate pleads with us to stop. The Switch is struggling to keep the game playable, but it feels like we're almost at the end of the dark jungle. We've never seen this section before. We gotta push on. Hold it together, Switch. Hold, hold, hold. Damn, cutscene. Kong is being hunted by something sneaky, something in the bushes. The game reveals not one, but three bosses. With the power to clip through solid matter. I think that's just a clipping error. Uh oh. Anyway, we're up against the Death Runners Council, three of Ga's powerful servants. At least we think they're supposed to be powerful. They're intimidating in the cutscene, sure, but in battle, most of the council doesn't seem interested in attacking much. We deal with a lot of smaller dinos as the council rotates in and out of battle. Look at them there, waiting to attack. Polite. We whittle down the council, taking care of extra little critters thrown into the fray. It may be the least challenging boss fight we've had besides, well, we thwack the last Death Runner and have another cutscene. Kong is victorious, not prey, but the mightiest predator. An ape so shatteringly imposing that he causes glaring visual issues. But wait, look out, Kong! One member of the council yet lives. He screeches, rousing painful memories of Gah. Memories? Huh. Looks more like a photo to me. A photo floating in midair? I guess Kong bought a print of the day his parents were brutally murdered. Never mind, Kong smash! The Death Runner Council is finished. Kong unlocks another new old ability. We can now perform the leap move Mama Kong pulled off in the tutorial. Great. I say we leap the heck out of here. The next zone loads briefly with Kong stuck in level architecture. Looking good. This is the Great Caverns, a network of caves with charming names like Dead Abyss, The Dire Pass, Caverns of Decay, and The Unwelcoming Chasm. Skull Island's cartographer was a real glass half empty kind of guy, huh? These caves are primarily infested with one kind of enemy. Ugh, spiders. spiders. Yeah, they're creepy. Some even have opposable thumbs, but no worries. The arachnids in the Great Caverns aren't much of a threat. They're about as intelligent as uh, the physics in this game. Not seeing many interesting things in this dark space. You deal with groups of the same eight-legged foes and work through near identical tunnels and chasms repeatedly. Every once in a while, you may feel the need to veer off course in search of things like uh, hidden items. Word of caution, be careful. This looks like a path ripe for secret goodies. Then, at this exact moment, our character locks up. We're somehow wedged in a portion of the world that is barely touching Kong's model. We can't move or interact in any way. Time to reload a save. Speaking of things breaking, a lot of broken interactions here, like enemies stuck in walls. And enemies oh. stuck in air? And this spider that seems to be all about vigorously shaking its booty. Even find another locked up asaurus that seems lost in thought. Look, Kong, no, the game, crap, but we get through this. Sure, we get through lots of things in Skull Island Rise of Kong, literally. Is this game almost over? Hang in there, buddy, because the level culminates in a boss fight with, well, you probably guessed it, a giant spider. 
This is Queen Oyak, a creature that flings webbing and spawns groups of enemies to dogpile on Kong. The tactic to take her down isn't immediately apparent. We spend a lot of time looking for her and beating down the swarm she spawns, seeing no way to hurt her. You see, Queen Oyak is inaccessible to do direct battle with. She sticks to slinking around her web way above Kong's head. She mostly stops to spawn enemies or to launch her annoyingly sticky web balls. Turns out, you need to use Kong's rock toss attack to knock her down for a few precious seconds of vulnerability. Not an easy feat. You need to avoid projectiles, kill groups of spawns, and do your best to utilize Kong's terrible throwing mechanic. It is a very long time before we see a decent amount of success clipping down Oyok's health bar, but eventually we're close to wrapping this trial of an encounter. We finally knock her down for the umpteenth time, go in for the last powerful Kong cracks, and… What? The game? Crashed? Oh, no, 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 not now. Not now, not when we're basically finished. That can't possibly mean. We have to do the Oyak boss fight all over again? Just as annoying the second time, folks. A cumbersome pain that still takes far too long, but we can do it. It. Just a couple more monkey punches. Here we go. Game is mocking us! No kidding. What's going on here? We're stuck in a cycle of Kong and spider kill and crash. No, I refuse to believe it. We can't let ourselves be beat by a piece of software. One more time. Fine. All right, here it is. Let's go. We fought through waves of baddies and spider spit. Oyak is tenderized. She's circling the pain drain. And... Yes! Oyak, the queen of crashes, is no more. With that, we've gained another special ability that was locked away long ago. Kong's Ground Pound and Slam, our last unlockable move. The offensive tool we need to get through shimmering red floors. Uh, when we don't just clip right through them. Right, and if we have all the Kongster's cool moves at our disposal, I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume the next section of this game is probably the last. Though, I really think Kong's skill set should extend beyond what his mama had. I mean, it didn't exactly help her tackle Ga in the first place. Kong enters the new locale, treating monstrous screams with something in the distance. The ferocious Ga is somewhere close by. Welcome to Skull Island Mountain Wasteland, a location plastered with rocky, desolate terrain. In its mountains, cliffs, and compact deserts, we fight the assortment of enemies that have been introduced throughout the game's campaign. And is it just me? Or does this place feel a lot more empty than the other zones we've been through? Uh, you're not wrong. The general openness of these rocky spaces and the dialed back greenery really make this place feel hollow. Speaking of hollow, you can find caves in the area. This one features an entrance with a rare variant of the invisible wall problem we spoke about earlier. We call this the invisible pole. You can get around it on either side, sure, but run dead center into the cave's entrance and not getting through there. Oh, but I know we'll be able to get through here. The infamous shimmering red floors make another appearance. Let's see if we clip through this one too. Consistency. The bare minimum we expect from your gameplay elements. Couldn't even give us that, huh? I mean, I guess there's consistency in that this zone is feeling about as put together as any other location in the game to this point. We find ourselves locking up, hitting weird slowdown patches, and being surrounded by interesting visual choices. There's only one way to wrap this area though, and that's with a deadly final confrontation. Gah, the monster that has haunted Kong's every moment. The twisted snarl, the death-filled gaze, the feet that still don't touch the ground. A waking nightmare, but our boy Kong is ready. We start the fiercest battle of Kong's life. Kong has to contend with Gah's staggering screeches and deadly talons. Ouch! We'll have to stay away until we figure out a way to take this crimson hell beast down. Think, Kong, think! You've come all this way, surmounted impossible trials. You've regained all the powerful ape knowledge Mama Kong instilled in you. Or us? I don't really know how that goes. But anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Shh! 
Mama Kong? Mama Kong. Mama Kong. That's it! What? What Mama Kong taught us! That think about that first battle with Ga. The only right way to take down this relentless fiend. Oh, you, you mean we, we let, let Ga break, break itself? itself. Wow, that didn't take long. Honestly, weirdly easy. God just stopped gawing. Huh, so what do we do now? We make like a middling caveman platformer from the 90s that isn't bonk. Ch Chuck Rock? I thought you'd never ask. is for Papa Kong. That is for Mama Kong. And this? This is for making us chase you through every inch of this jive duty butt game. Woo, we murdered. Kong celebrates his glorious victory as the King of Beasts, King Kong. Wow, this adventure sure was something, a game. We played. And on the Nintendo Switch, which, now that we've seen its performance on that hybrid device, kind of begs the question, what's Skull Island Rise of Kong like on other platforms? Well, question no longer, friends. We hate ourselves. Translation, we played it again. This time on PC, how does it compare? Well, getting right into a comparison of the title screen on both platforms, we can see things are much sharper on PC. No big surprise, we are working with more powerful hardware now. Despite the fidelity top-up, this PC version version is running at a 1080p resolution, with no means to bump it up to 4K. Pretty archaic for a PC release in 2023. Time to dive into the game world. Now, while we're still seeing far clearer visuals in this version, we gotta call it like it is. The textures are still pretty ugly. Mama Kong specifically still has this weird carved Play-Doh look to her. Out in the open areas, the world carries more detail with a way better draw distance. The water looks better and it doesn't have the strange broken bar artifact problem we kept seeing on Switch. The additional hardware powering this version of Skull Island undeniably benefits how the game world is represented. Oh, while we're talking about our surroundings, we gotta bring up the map. Tell me it's been upgraded. Ugh, no, just as unreadable as ever. Still nothing telling us where to go and still no positional icon showing us where we are among this zigzag mess. Guess we should have expected as much. And don't expect any polish to the general gameplay experience either. For example, we've got the same janky head bob animation when we slightly tilt our joystick forward. <laughs> We've still got immense open spaces with massive invisible walls. Still have enemies that refuse to engage us in battle. And there's still an alarming lack of care given to general detail everywhere. When we get to the point that we notice Kong's boulder throw still doesn't hit locked on targets, we give up hope that this is a significantly altered version of the game. Beyond PC hardware making this game look and run slightly better, the only real change we notice in the tutorial is a scene after the first Gaw confrontation. Remember when baby Kong ran away and the camera lingered on a puddle of water way too long on Switch? Well, here's the same scene on PC. Look, a reflection. Sure, it's got all the fidelity of a Rorschach test, but at least it adds context. Baby Kong's peering into himself. We get it now. After this tiny revelation and seeing mostly minor adjustments to the pains we experienced on Switch, we put a pause on Reliving Skull Island on PC. That is, until about two days later when we clock back in and we're met with this. A brand new start screen. Now, did he, did he want to be do it? Does this mean? Yup, they've pushed an update for Skull Island Rise of Kong on PC. The crazy part? There seems to be no mention of this update from any outlet anywhere, including Iguanabee's official media accounts. Oh, what? Crazy! So they finally tweaked the game to be in a more playable state. Or so we thought. Uh, playing again, we do see changes, like set dressing assets added in different locations. Plus, those little broken video sequences and the pop-ups telling you how to perform a move? Well, they're running at a proper frame rate now. We even notice tweaks in cutscenes. Remember the Baby Kong reflection we were just talking about? It's been altered. 
again. Now, would a real reflection only show Baby Kong's character model and not the world around him? No sky, no stars, no clouds. <gasps> Probably not, but there's no denying this is different. And we have to mention the most significant tweak of all, something we've been begging to change. When you pause the game and bring up the map screen, you get this. A reworked map menu. We now have color-coded sections, new markers, and yes, yes, they finally played a positional icon to track Kong on the map. Finally, the mega upgrade we needed, or it seemed to be, until we tested it a little further in the game. Yeah, we're seeing discrepancies like this. An open and traversable path in game. Hmm, shows here there should be a wall in front of us. Let's move forward a little bit and check the map again. Oh, look. Kong's broken reality. He's smack dab in the middle of nothing. In other spaces, we find mountains gating off traversal. When we head to the map, there are no boundaries anywhere near our icon. This should be open space. Why is our map lying to us? Look, we got an update, and, and it's nice to see work put into a game that clearly needs it. But we're seeing changes that range from minor visual adjustments to monkey's paw style borked upgrades. It's nowhere near enough to make the game enjoyable. As of this video, the moment to moment gameplay is still daunting and dishearteningly janky. It's a game still brimming with clueless and broken enemy AI, still ripe with questionable designs, still more of a chore to play than any action-adventure game has any right to be. And that's in the game's shiniest updated PC release. Back in Nintendo Switch Land, weeks later, no update has been pushed to the system. And honestly, we're kind of giving up hope that one will come out. Meaning the Switch version may forever be the worst iteration of a game that, even in its very best state, is still terrible to play. Skull Island, Rise of Kong. Any way you play it, this ain't the eighth wonder of the world. It's a game fraught with glaring development issues, a title as appealing as Empire State Building Roadkill, a mammoth video game nosedive for one of fiction's greatest characters. Well, Adam, it was the developer's ambitions in the end that got him. Oh no, it wasn't their ambitions. It was publisher killed the beast. It's just bad.